God is good, amen. We are alive in the best time we could ever be alive on the face of the planet. I believe God has good things in store for us all. Amen. To the three that believe it. You do know we call believers because we need to believe. So I'm going to try it again. He has good things in store for us all. Amen. Amen. Well, I've got an interesting message this morning. Very interesting message. But one thing I've got to put out there is how many of you know pastors that love you never want to bring condemnation and guilt, but they always want to draw you closer to align yourself with the will of God. And sometimes, tell your neighbor, it means having a conversation that just, rattles us a little bit so tell your neighbor don't be too rattled you're in the right place he loves you pastor Ian's going oh dear lord now believers are are meant to be walking a life of faith amen you know God calls us to walk by faith and not by sight but how many of you know that he gives us wisdom wisdom to walk out this faith He wants us to use brain that He's given us. But we can tap into something better than that. It's called the Spirit of Wisdom. And we can be led by His Spirit to do the right things. Amen? Let me pray right there quickly. Father, we just thank You right now for Your Word. I thank You. Your Word will go forth, Lord. I thank You for every heart that is open to receive this Word this morning, Lord, because I know that You have blessings set up for Your people. And Lord, as we align ourselves to Your ways because your ways are higher than our ways, Lord, we are going to see the best results in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. There's two things that that, um, in faith you can walk in, and the one is called foolish faith, and the other one is called presumptuous faith. Anybody ever heard of that? Foolishness is when I go do things in the flesh that I shouldn't do. Like, if I'm earning this, and I decide to buy a vehicle that costs this, Come on, David, you're a financial planner. Help me out here, brother. I need some feedback. That's not wise, amen? Now, a lot of people will step into this realm and go, but God said He'll meet every single one of my needs. He said He'll meet every single one of your needs, but not your foolishness. Now, will He get you out of it? Absolutely. I've been there on one or two occasions. But let me say this. It sets us back so much, and God doesn't want setbacks in our life. And that's why I spoke about a faith that, that's like potholes. That You ever driven your car and you hit a pothole? And how many know you hit it hard enough? It messes your alignment. It can tear your tire. It puts your vehicle out of action for a while. And that's sometimes like our faith. If we hit these potholes in our life, it can actually put us out of action for a while. And it takes us time to get back on the journey God wants for us. But He doesn't want us to necessarily hit the. He doesn't want these delays Call them self-inflicted delays. Amen? We can avoid them. Tell your neighbor, you can avoid them. Okay? So that's foolishness. But presumption is a little bit different. Presumption is doing something beyond the parameters God has put for you. That's the easiest way for me to describe it in, in a few seconds. It's doing something beyond the boundaries God has authorized you. I'll give you an example. Pastor Tony has been called to President of Chariots of Light. Yes? We all know that He's called to it. He can go into areas and move in areas with a God-given authority that I might not be able to. Because God never called me to put on a president jacket and go and speak into these realms. Now, although I can if God leads me, but the mantle's on Him. If I try and step into that because I think it's a good idea and I'm offended, I don't want to be a part of Him anymore and His group, groupie, And I decide I'm going to go put on my jacket and I'm going to run my own motorcycle show. What do you think is going to happen? That's presumptuous. I'm stepping into a realm which opens me up for a whole lot of heartache and pain. Amen? That's the best way I can describe it. There's many examples and I'm going to go through some this morning. But here's a few questions. Does God want you to increase? Does God want you healed? Are you sure? Because we know the Bible tells us, right? Amen? Amen. So you know God wants us blessed. 
So if he said it, that settles it. So we can stand on his word from Genesis to Revelation. Yes? But how many of you know when God directs us, we need specific words? I give an example. If I'm going through marriage counseling or problems, and I go, ah, God, give me a word. I don't know, that one. And it says Judas hung himself. Okay, Lord, I'll just hang on for a while. It'll work out. Is that, is that God speaking to me? No. no. We need a rhema word, a word that comes alive and jumps out and says, this is what it is for your situation. Can you, can you see this? So sometimes we take the Bible and we go, I'm going to make a decision. Don't like that one, don't like that. Oh, I like that one. I'll take that one, Lord. Give me three, actually. That's not God speaking to you. So this is His word and His will for our lives. Yes? It's His laws, His principles. They work whether we believe it or not. Yes. But I can't just go take anything I like in a situation and go, I'm just going to use that word. I need Him to speak to me. It's going to jump out at me and grab my heart and go, I know God's speaking to me. That word He's given me, even though it doesn't make sense. Or somebody's going to be speaking to me, and something they say jumps out and grabs me, and I go, that's the word I'm holding on to, because I know you're speaking to me, Lord. You, you're with me? So, God said, now we need that word, because when we take that word and we anchor our faith to it, now we've got power. Now we've got some things to step out on. When the Lord called us to Australia, we had resistance after resistance with our visas. But one thing I knew, God told me, go. And I said, it doesn't matter who's on the other side, I'm going. It doesn't matter what obstacles are in the way, I'm coming through. And through all the resistance, God opened ways that seemed impossible. And it almost looked like it wasn't going to happen. But yeah, we are 10 years later. Because we had a word that we stepped out on and we could apply our faith. But if we did not have the word to step out on, we could have been in a whole lot of challenges and in a bad place. Amen? I want to share something with you. In Ezekiel 13, verse 6 to 7, it says this, They have envisioned fertility and false divination, saying, Thus says the Lord. But the Lord has not sent them. But yet they hope that the word may be confirmed, come true. So in other words, here's these bunch of people and they're going, I'm going because I am just believe. And God said, I never said. And they're expecting for the word to come to pass, but God never gave. Mm -hmm. And then they go and say, thus says the Lord. You know, we as believers have to be very careful when we say, thus says the Lord. Very rarely will you even hear the pastors here go, thus says the Lord. Because that's a dangerous place to get in if you miss it and lead people astray. I don't want to be in that place ever where God says, Oh, you thus says the Lord anointing, except it wasn't my anointing. Now we've got to deal with some things that you've led a lot of people astray, even the damage you've caused in your own life. But look what he says. Have you not seen a futile vision? Have you not spoken false divination? You say the Lord says, but I have not spoken. See, often we have to be very careful to step out and tell people God said. You know, as pastors, I'm sure Pastor Ian could verify, the amount of times you see God change his mind with people. It's like, Lord, are you like, are you okay? Like one minute God told me this, then no, 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 he's telling me this. Then he's telling me this, then, oh no, he's called me here. And I'm like, but God doesn't change his mind on your calling. He might change his mind on the direction he's going to take because he's leading things. And maybe we've caused challenges which come along the way and he has to navigate us through them. But at the end of the day, when he says, I'm taking you there, guess what? He's taking you there. Amen. When he says, I've called you to preach, you're going to preach. When he says, I've called you to be a king, you are going to be a king. Yes. Amen. God still speaks to his people. He says, my sheep know my voice. A stranger, they will not follow. So guess what? The stranger, he will not follow. We will not follow. But also, our emotions, we won't follow. Because we can be led by our emotions sometimes. And we want to help God out. I've been there many times. Lord, you're taking a long time. But listen, I've been around for a while. I can help you. If you do that, that is just problem solved. Like, really, is it that difficult? And God's saying, you haven't seen the next 20 years after that move, son. 
I can see the future. I've been there. I've been in the past, and I'm present. Trust me, I know the bigger picture. Come into alignment with my plan, and you'll get there. Amen? I want to read you a little article that I thought was amusing. The old motto of soldiers during the Revolutionary War applies to many areas. Trust in God, but keep your powder dry. That's not a bad idea. The powder in the firearms that, that they used to soak the firearms and psh, okay, keep it dry. In other words, place your life in the Savior's hands, but stay at the ready. Do all you can to prepare yourself for battle, understanding that the ultimate outcome rests with the Lord. To walk by faith does not mean stop thinking. Don't look to your neighbor. Just keep looking forward. <laughs> to trust God does not imply becoming scruffy, untidy, lazy, or apathetic. Yeah. You and I need to trust God for our finances, but there's no license to spend foolishly. You and I also need to trust God for safety in a car, but we're not wise to pass on a curve. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You know, yesterday I was disappointed. I was looking forward the whole week to a chariot's ride, the last ride of the year. And I wake up at 5 o'clock to prepare my message, and I see text messages saying, we need to cancel because of the rain and the debris. I'm like, what's wrong with these people? He who considers the weather shall not prosper. But then the Holy Spirit said, wisdom, son. Wisdom. You don't want people laying on hands for you because you come off your motorcycle because you slipped today, and you're preaching tomorrow. And I said, you know, that's actually wise. Very wise. I think I'm going to spend the day prepping. Amen? Sometimes we can save ourselves a lot of pain. You and I ought to trust God for safety in the car, but we're not wise to pass on a blind curve. Acting foolish and thoughtlessly, expecting God to bail us out of things when they go amiss is not faith at all. It's presumption. Wisdom says, do all you can in your own strength, but trust God to do what you cannot do. Charles R. Swindle said this, expecting God to bail us out of our foolishness isn't faith, it's presumption. There is a massive difference between walking a life of faith as we call to. Look at Abraham, look at all the people in the Bible that, that walk by faith. They had a spoken word from God and stepped out on it and God showed up. But the times, you can look at um, uh, Saul, you can look at uh, Samson, all those guys, when they stepped out of line and thought, I'm going to do it my way, destruction came their path. God's standing here going, what are you doing? I'm not in that. And that's what we've got to be careful of. Amen? <clears throat> I want to share with you what happened with the Israelites. The Israelites were heading to the promised land. God said, go, I'm going to give you a promised land. Everyone remember that story? Probably been over-preached many times. But there's so much in that story. There's so much in that. Just the one chapter, there's so much in it. They had a previous command to enter the promised land. There were leaders established. But then Israel refuses to enter the land. So they leave Egypt. God's saying, I'm going to take you from here to there. They happily go with the journey. And then they get to a point where something switches. And they try to do things their own way. But there's track record of God showing up in the wilderness, showing up, doing stuff. But something happens. And they operated in at the end, and I'll show you. They stepped into presumptuous faith. And that's where the problem came. So I'm going to read from Deuteronomy 1 to 8. We're going to go through to verse uh, 43, but I'm going to jump through. So I'm not going to read everything for time's sake, but I'm going to be jumping through. And I want to show you some things. So if we start in Deuteronomy 1 verse 8, it says, See, have I set the land before you? Go in and possess the land, which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abram, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to them and their descendants after them. Now, did God say go? Did they step out in a word from the Lord? So they were in the will of God, right? Jump with me to verse 19. Let's look from there. So we departed from Horeb and went through all the great and terrible wilderness which you saw on the way to the mountains of the Amorites as the Lord our God had commanded us. Then we came to Kadesh Barnea and I said to you, you have come to the mountains of the Amorites which the Lord our God is giving us. Look, 
The Lord our God has set the land before you. Go up and possess it. As the Lord God of your fathers has spoken to you, do not fear or be discouraged. Can you see up until this point? They were given a word. They were encouraged all the way, saying, that's the will of God. Keep going. Yes. They were on the right track. They were in the perfect will of God all the way, right? Look at verse 26. Nevertheless, you would not go up, but rebelled against the command of the Lord. You know, how many times in our life God is showing us in situations, do that. But because it doesn't make sense in our own natural ability, we don't step out on it. And we start trying to do things in our own strength. And that actually becomes rebellion to God. We start rebelling against His instruction. Now, I know it's never happened to Pastor Ian. I know you've never had anybody come to you and you give them counsel and they go do their own thing. I know it's never happened to you. But at times, people I've heard of in the past, in other churches, other pastors. I know for them, it's happened. Believe it or not. I've told them it's never happened yet. It must be anointing. But at times it happens and you give instruction and then they don't like that instruction. And I know it's never happened yet where they'd go to a different pastor and seek something different. Never happened yet. But at times it happens. And they're looking for the right word to suit them. But God has instructed. And if we just take the instruction and step out on it, guess what happens? blessing but guess what happens when we don't we start rebelling against god and we start going against his counsel his word amen and we start stepping out into a bad place i'm not going to read from verse 27 to 37 but you can go back and read it you see a lot of rebellion you see a lot of murmuring complaining and even the dangerous thing they start listening to voices of other people they start listening to voices to distract them and deter them from the plan of god in their life be careful of the voices that are come. If God gives you a word and it's confirmed, it's confirmed. It's not just a open up and pick one. It's confirmed. You need to stand and believe God and keep doing what He's told you to do. Because He may have spoken to you, but He may not have spoken to somebody else. And somebody else's intellect and world length of experience is trying to help you along. And sometimes their motive is good. But you need to stand. We take counsel from everybody. But at the end of the day, we've got to stand on what God is putting in our heart and step on that. Amen? So look from verse 37. The Lord was also angry with me, Moses. <laughs> Guess what? The pastor gets it as well. Not only do they stop the inheritance, but he says, oh, by the way, Pastor Moses, you're not getting it either. Pray for your leaders. Pray for them, because we stand and have to give an account to God for all you wonderful people. Amen? Uh, that went over. Anyway, moving right along. Saying, even you shall not go in there. Joshua, the son of Nun, who stands before you, he shall go in there. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Moreover, your little ones and your children, who, will say, who, who say will be victims... You today have no knowledge of good and evil. They shall go in there and possess it. What happened? Up until that point, they started aborting the plan of God for their life because of rebellion, because of not listening and heeding to what He wanted you to do. And all of a sudden, was it God's plan for them to go into the promised land? From the first, right? Did He not promise it to Abram? Is God not a man that He should not lie? He said He'll do it. But now he's saying, I'm going past this generation to that generation. In other words, what he's saying is, I'm not moved by an individual. If you don't want to be obedient, I'll move past you and go into another generation or somebody else that will be willing to heed to me. But at the end of the day, my promise, what I have intended, is going to be fulfilled. What's going to happen in Australia is going to happen in Australia. It doesn't matter who's involved. If, if we don't align ourselves, God will move from this place to somewhere else. But his plan will be established. That what he spoke before the foundation of the earth will be established. Nothing can stop it. He's just looking for people that will be willing to heal themselves to what he wants us to do. Amen. But I thank you that we find those faithful people here. The heritage of faith will be a people that God can say, I can trust them. Not only are they going to go into the promised land, but they're going to take people with them. Amen. He's not moving past this generation. 
Look from verse 42, and I'm going to get to the part. And when every one of you had girded on his weapons of war, you were ready to go up into the mountain, and the Lord said to me, Tell them, do not go and fight, for I am not among you. Now people go, hold on, God is a man that he should not lie. He's not a man that he should lie. He promises yes and amen, he will do. But now he's changed his mind. He didn't change his mind. What happened was this, the anointing was here. And the Israelites stepped out of the anointing. The cloud was moving in a direction. The same direction he said he was going to go all the time. They stepped out of it. And it carried on going. So all of a sudden, now they're deciding, oh yeah, by the way, I think we better just go and do it now. And the clouds shifted. The anointing shifted. And now they're going to go do it in their own strength and esteem. That's presumption. Watch this. And he warns them, do not go for I'm not among you, lest you be defeated before your enemies. Verse 43. So I spoke to you, yet you would not listen, but rebelled against the command of the Lord and presumptuously went up. You see, we need to be very careful of making presumptions about faith. Because you know what it does? It damages our faith. It damages the people around us. But also, you know, to the world, it starts discrediting Christianity. Because people are doing foolish things and presumptuous things, and they go, but this thing doesn't work. Why do I need your God? I've got a Lamborghini. I've got wealth. Why do I need this? Amen? Amen? We've got to be so in tune and in line with what God wants for our lives that we can't move and miss a beat with Him or do things in our own strength and ability. Can you see that? I want to read another article quickly, which I also thought was amusing. It says, Be careful of the sin of presumption that tries to take upon oneself something without permission or authority. Because that's the real thing. Did you have permission and do you have the authority to step into it? That comes from God. When he speaks and anoints something, you can step into it, and it'll be anointed. There will be a manifestation. There will be a grace on you to walk into it. But if we walk in and we didn't have his permission, and we didn't have that authority, the anointing on top of us, covering us, and we step into it, we step out in our own flesh. Amen? It says here, recently we have seen many venture capitalists pour $1.4 trillion into initial public offerings of internet startup companies. In April 2000, these stocks plummeted to less than $600 billion. Less than half of what people had presumed. There's the word again, presumed. It's counting your chickens before they hatch. It's spending the money before it's in. I've been on boards of different companies, and I know the pain of that. When monies are committed to areas when that money is not in yet, and it doesn't come in. You know what happened with Chariots of Light? When we did the inaugural, the first um, show and shine, we sat as a, as a leadership team, and we said, what's it going to cost? This is not about faith, because to uphold the integrity of the ministry, if people who had pledged to give, and their hearts are good, did not show up, and we can't pay the bills. Who gets discredited? Them or us? Us. So what we did is we go, show us the cost. Let us make sure that if we commit to this, whether people put or not, we will pay the bill. That's not presumption. Now, the faith was this, that we're believing for the money in, even though we know we can cover the bill. Can you see how it works? The faith was we can, we can cover this event, and we're going to believe in for it that we don't have to pay a cent. But if it went belly up, we can cover the bill and we can keep our name clean. Can you see the difference? There's such a fine line between walking from faith into foolishness and presumption. And we get caught with it so often. It says, yeah, the Lord wants us to guard against presumption in our economics, our relationships, our employment, politics, lifestyle, religion. Trust the Lord to help you avoid presuming too much unless you are acting under the authority, command, or clear will of God. Now, if God told us, and we had an audible, we, we knew whether it was through Scripture or the leadership, if we knew God said to us, you're going to go purchase land, and I'm going to give you a building, and we all knew, without a shadow of a doubt, God had spoken to us, you can believe we would step out on it, knowing that that thing would be paid. But if God hasn't spoken, we don't move. Amen? 
you with me? Because we have to be obedient to what he's saying. Because then we have that authority and he will back us. Is this blessing anyone? It's challenged me in so many areas. You see, they decided to move. The Israelites decided to move when God was not in it. They stepped out into something, but the anointing had shifted. The, the, the spoken word of the Lord was not backing them. The rhema word was not backing them. And they stepped into something in their own flesh and ability. Amen. If you look at the word presumptuous, it actually means failing to observe the limits of what is permitted or appropriate. Now, I want to say this. This message is not to stop you from thinking or believing far and above all that you could ask or think. This word has no limitations on it. I want to make that clear. There is no limitations on what this is. But you know what the Lord put in my heart? He said, I want to, I want to protect my people. I want them to walk into the fullness of what, God, what I have for them next year and the, year and the years ahead. I want them to experience far and above all that I could ever give them or that they could dare to imagine. But I want them to walk into it with a wisdom and a wisdom and an understanding that when they step out, I show up every single time. Amen? Do you know that sometimes delayed action, if we take a little bit longer to make a decision, we can actually save us a lot more pain down the road. You know that the best thing the devil wants to do is get us so emotional and in a rut that he almost forces us, he's pushing us to make decisions out of emotions and fear and anxieties or whatever it is. And he actually pushes us into a decision that wasn't the right decision. In those times, you need to sit back, sit on your hand and just say, Holy Spirit, till I got peace, I ain't do nothing. I don't care what's coming against me. I'm just going to wait for that peace. And give me a word. Speak to me. Speak to me through leaders. Speak to me through my church family. Speak to me through somebody. But just speak to me so I can step out knowing that you're with me. Amen? In Matthew 4.4, 4, he says this, He answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. God wants us in a relationship, intimacy with Him, so that He can speak to us, so He can commune with us. How do you know God wants to speak to each and every single one of us? He wants to direct us. He wants to be a part in every decision. Now, does He necessarily want to tell you which car park to park in? Maybe not. But can I tell you something? When you cultivate the gift and the sensitivity and say, Holy Spirit, show me where there's a car park, that's different. Amen? When you get trusted with the little, He'll trust you with much. So when I know I've heard Him right every time, or majority of the time, and I know where to go, and I don't have to get stressed out, and I find the right car park, guess what? When it comes to making a serious decision, more than likely, I'm going to know His voice because I've trained it with a little. So I'm going to say that again. Does he want to be involved with where we park? Not unless a tree is going to fall over on it. And he can, and he will, and he wants to warn you of those things. He doesn't want you in harm's way. But guess what? We've just got to learn to cultivate the voice of the Holy Spirit and become sensitive to it, and he'll direct us in every major decision. You know, did he tell you, empty your bank account you have to have a specific word because if you do it and it's done in the flesh how are you going to pay your bills God knows he's practical but let me tell you if he tells you to do it and you do it you better believe that there's a harvest coming did he tell you throw your medication away because you're sick but you believe by faith that you healed if he told you to do it do it but if he never told you, you open yourself up. Amen. God's wise. He's very practical. Amen. We've got to be sensitive to these things. Did he tell you to marry the person? Don't look. Just look at me. Don't look. Don't. We're not starting the marriage series for a couple months. Just look forward. Don't look left or right. Oh, you look left, sir. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. Pastor Ian's a good counselor, I promise you. We need the rhema word in our life. Amen? It's God's word spoken to us. 
It's when we open the Bible and something jumps out and grabs our heart and we go, Lord, that's it. That's what I need for this situation. That's what I need for this circumstance. We need to be led by Him every single day. He wants to guide us. Amen? He wants to direct our footsteps. He doesn't want us walking in presumption. He doesn't walk, want us walking in foolishness. But He wants us living by faith because the just shall live by faith. And there's a difference. Amen? There's a big difference. Yeah, call the band up. I've said enough. Isaiah 1, 19 to 20. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Tell your neighbor, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse, tell them there's a but, and it's not the one you're sitting on. If you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience, acting out when God speaks, is better than delayed, because delayed is not obedience. Amen? We can save ourselves so much pain, church, if we just learn to flow with what He's telling us. If we learn to step out in what He's telling us, we can save so much pain. I never married my wife until I knew the Lord had spoken to me and confirmed it. I never. And we have a good marriage. Does she try and steal my chocolates so I don't eat too much chocolates? Absolutely. But we're working through that. But if chocolates is the biggest problem in your marriage, it's not doing too bad. Maybe the second motorcycle is an issue, but we'll get through that. <laughs> and the muscle car, jet ski, a few things. But some of those are foolish because you've got to wait for the right timing, amen? It's okay to have fun and be real in church. Amen. And let me just say this. I'm going to say it again. This is not a message of condemnation but it's setting you up to win. Heritage of faith, making winners. And sometimes we need to hear stuff that are going to set us up to become the winners in life. Amen? And I want to encourage you, if you've made mistakes, you know, if you look at King David, his heart, he says, he's a man after my own heart. Really, Lord? He's an adulterer, he's a murderer, and he's a liar. Really? Some of you think this is the best religion I can be a part of. I cross that thing out later. That's not what he was saying. You know what he was saying? He was somebody that turned to me every time. Every time he made a mistake, he just came back to me. He just kept turning back to me. Doesn't matter how many times he messed up, he kept coming back to me. And if you've made a mistake, you've done foolish things, doesn't matter what it is, and you repent of it, God can restore. He says, I restore the years of the locusts of Eden. He can restore years in your life. You may have lost 10 years. God can give it back to you in one year. You may have lost a whole year, two years income. God can give it back to you in a couple months. I've seen it. I know what He can do. And I want to encourage you, like King David, doesn't matter what you've done, run back to Him with a heart of humility and love. And He will bless and restore. And as we seek the spirit of wisdom for every decision we make, Guess what? We'll move from foolish presumption into a life of faith like Abram. And you know what we're going to see? Guaranteed results because His word is yes and amen. And it works every single time if we align ourselves properly with it. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. What a wonderful service we've just had. We've experienced the presence of God. And I know His presence and I know Him personally. And I want to ask if you've been watching this, do you know Jesus personally? I want to invite you to become a part of the family of God. I'd love to ask you to pray with us. If you've watched the service and you say, but you know what? I don't know Jesus, but I would love to know him. This prayer is for you. Salvation is now. Don't put it off. Don't leave it. Come along with me and pray this with me and say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take care of me, Lord. Wash me clean of my sin. 
Bring me into your family, Lord. Make me the head and not the tail. Take me from darkness into light, from sickness into health. Thank you, Jesus. You paid the price that I may have eternal life with you and the Father and the Holy Spirit. But more than that, I can live a successful life here on earth. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you prayed that and, and you'd like to, we'd love to be able to actually send you some resources. If you would like that, please contact us via the phone or email. We'd love to get some things into your hand. And if you're in the local area, we'd love for you to join us for our next Sunday service. We're open. All are welcome. God bless. And if you prayed that, welcome to the family.